Hello everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm gonna show you all how to work with ZRAM and swap files. So both are ways to expand the memory of a system. So here I am using the NanoPy M4 which only has got 2GB of RAM. I use this as my main desktop computer, so the 2GB of RAM is a limitation, but you can work around it with ZRAM and with swap files. So ZRAM is a compression of RAM, so this creates a little bit more usable memory, but this comes at a cost of CPU power. So the CPU has to compress everything on the RAM for this, but these days with boards with 6 cores, this really isn't much. So the advantage of using ZRAM is a lot higher than the disadvantage of it. A swap file is a file that you create on a writable partition. This is used as memory, but of course the drive that you use must be fast enough to be usable. Also the latency is very important. So here I am using an NVMe drive, so it is best not to use a swap file with an SD card. The biggest disadvantage of using a swap file is that it shortens the lifespan of an NVMe drive or SSD because of the many reads and writes. So here an example of why using a swap file can be very handy. I like to open a lot of tabs in my browser. Like here I am opening all the YouTube videos of that day. And as you can see it quickly fills up the RAM and the ZRAM. And then everything becomes very unresponsive and hard to work with. So now let's create a swap file. So here is my text file again, so you can download it in the description here below. All you have to do is written in there. So the first command is fallocate, so it creates a file of 8 gigabytes called swap file. You can make this the size you want yourself of course. If 4 gigabytes is enough for you then 4 gigabytes is okay. The second command is to give the correct writes to the swap file. Then make swap, that makes it a swap file. And then swap on, that turns on the swap file. So as you see there is now 8.9 gigabytes of swap, so that is quite a lot more usable memory. With this I can do video editing with ease with the NanoPy M4 and I can open as many tabs as I want. Now we will edit F tab so it will automatically enable the swap file at boot. So all we need to do is add this line at the end. Press Ctrl X to save, yes. So that is all we needed to do to create our swap file. So now let's do the test again with YouTube. So I again open a lot of videos and it quickly fills up the RAM and also the ZRAM. So now it is using the swap file also, but everything is still very responsive. You can still use everything like it should it's be. It's actually not the same electrical or mechanical setup from back then. This is actually an improved version. So, I version think it's now high time to get to be specific. And some of its improvements are the following. Strain gauges are mounted inside the boards, so that the receiver control PCB can recognize if the driver falls off. There is a transmitter PCB with lithium ion charge the axis of the long boards to guarantee a safe mechanical setup. There were lots of other changes as well, but if I would name them all, we would be sitting here all day long. What I'm trying to say is that all my long models so far have been pretty complicated. Which is why in this video I will be repurposing my old longboards. So as you can see, even with only 2GB of RAM, you can still make an SBC very useful with swap files and ZRAM. So to enable ZRAM it is very simple, just type sudo apt install zram-config, that is all you need to do. I could go a lot deeper into this, but I'm gonna leave it with this. So thank you all for watching, I hope you'll like my video, see you all later, bye!